Hello everybody, it is Friday, September 17th, and welcome to another 4-Minute Friday. Today's my dog's birthday. Hey Shadow. Hey boy. Hey Pa. But it's also part two of looking at our emotional health. Last week, we covered two important points about our emotional health. And for reference, we've been taking inspiration from Peter Scazzaro's book, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. You should read more. Hooked on phonics work for me. What if she applied what she learned and she couldn't get the commercial right. Hook it on Pahonikes! <laughs> Work it for me! It's good for you. We were on number three, I believe. And the third thing we're gonna talk about is shame. We aren't meant to cover up our brokenness, weakness, or failures. If you're a human being, and I'm assuming you all are, then you have flaws. Here's an excerpt from Peter's book, it says this. The pressure to present an image of ourselves as strong and spiritually together hovers over most of us. We feel guilty for not measuring up, for not making the grade. We forget that not one of us is perfect and that we are all sinners. We need to understand that all humanity is weak and vulnerable and dependent on God. There are no exceptions to this rule. We can pretend that our favorite golfer didn't commit adultery, that our favorite preacher didn't throw out the Old Testament, that Michael Jordan is good at baseball, that the queen doesn't pass gas. Probably smells wonderful. But there are flaws and imperfections in us all. Shame is not of God. When Isaiah was called by God to reach his people, he was ashamed of his past, of the things that he said, of the things that he did, and the lifestyle he led. But God gave him a vision where Isaiah stood in the throne room of God. Fire and smoke were everywhere. Isaiah was scared and ashamed. An angel appeared and touched his lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. The image here reflects that of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. Your sin is atoned for and your guilt or shame is taken away. Later in Isaiah's ministry, he says this, but the Lord helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. We need to be confident that our flaws do not identify us, but Jesus Christ places his identity on us. We are his and should view ourselves through that lens more often. Number four, and our second one today, compartmentalization is a hindrance. So compartmentalization is when you segregate parts of your life, whether that be in thought or emotion. People can sometimes put their lives into various compartments and act differently in various situations, like acting differently at work, church, home, or on the internet. Dividing relationships into these things seems silly, like Pastor Adam. Husband Adam. Love you. Come find flowers. I'm sorry. Friend Adam. Coworker Adam. Hey, go away, I'm super busy being important. Or internet troll Adam. <laughs> Doing this represents a lack of personal integrity, but many of us do it. Why? Well, the reason is self-preservation. We want to be calm, cool, and collected and have other people view us in that way. So we often bury our feelings. Some people just want to portray a specific image of themselves to the world around them, something more acceptable, something to be worshiped. They hide their true nature in order to feel less vulnerable in this world. And this is the opposite of God's plan for your life. Let's lightning Lightning round this thing with some scriptures. scriptures. Proverbs 3, 6. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. 1 Corinthians 10.31 So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Matthew 6.16 In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We should be spiritually mature and not divide ourselves into compartments like secular and sacred, else we are hiding parts of our heart from God. Listen, none of this is meant to give you anxiety. In fact, I hope it's a stress reliever so that you understand you can be your true self, genuine before God. You were created to be you and God loves you. Emotional health begins and ends 
with understanding that your genuine self is good enough. I hope you learned something today and we'll catch you next week again for our next Four Minute Friday. My mic wasn't on, what? Anyways, I fixed it. Peter Scazzerzo, cause, cause this is really, Scazzero. Peter Scazzerzo, cause, of course he had that weird name. We've been taking inspiration from Peter Kaz Peter.